noticing that the tax revenues, property tax revenues, are actually been declining for a couple of years. So, you know, some people are critical of this saying we need to just have a more comprehensive property tax reform and keep that sort of giving specific targeted tax breaks. And how do you respond to that? I think if you, um, no, no matter which direction you turn, you'll find someone that's critical of anything. Uh, in the sense that you have people that are critical of that tax break, you have developers that are saying it's not enough. Um, you know, you, you get it on both ends, uh, so my job is to, to use the tools I believe necessary to move the economy and uh, the, it's particularly the housing economy forward in Baltimore. We know that there's a demand for uh, apartments in, in the city. Uh, we've done the studies. We've shown that, um, you know, while they are, we, you know, in, a, in a perfect world, everyone would want to buy a home. We know that that's not the reality in today's market. Well, we have people who want to live in Baltimore. A lot of the millennials that are looking to, to move to Baltimore, that like Baltimore, are looking to rent. And we need to uh, have a broad offering uh, for people who want to live in Baltimore. We can't just have one product on the market. That's, uh, it, it is unwise. And we're going to use the tools that we believe are necessary to spur development. And that is what I did when I, when I initiated the, uh, the downtown vacancy study. And after that, initiated the tax break. And it is what I'm doing again after we've seen success. I mean, you, you, you would have to intentionally close your eyes and be blind to the, the, uh, the results of the first tax credit. I mean, the cranes are there and the projects are happening. So you're talking about like six projects, or six to nine or something like that mm -hmm. from the initial. Is there any concern about the drop in property tax revenues, that this might be somehow a result of all these tax breaks? No, I, I think it evens itself out in the end. We, we benefit from uh, income tax revenues as well. So it is, it is a, um, a long view and a, a multifaceted approach to get a di uh, diverse revenue streams to support the economy over the long term. Mayor, I'd like to ask about the investigation into MIT. Where does that stand? Into? MIT. Oh, I thought you were saying NYT, I was oh, like, New York, yeah. what? <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> the Mayor's uh, Office of Information Technology. It's an ongoing investigation. I don't have any news on it. So there have been no update from the Inspector General? No. Can, uh, can you confirm that you've received allegations of kickbacks in that office? I cannot confirm that. I wanted to ask you about something on the agenda that was approved today at the Board mm -hmm. of Estimates. Uh, advisory or a, a consulting contract with William Maxford as far as fiscal matters for the city, how is he expected to contribute to your administration? Uh, Mr. Ratchet is an institution. Uh, anybody that's worked in Annapolis knows him. He's been an incredible resource in making sure uh, that our, legis the, our legislative packages, as well as the legislation that potentially impacts Baltimore, um, doing the, you know, running the numbers and uh, advising the administration. He's advised my administration and at least the past three uh, administrations. He's done an incredible job. It's a pleasure to work with him. So, what is he? So, how is he going to help uh, the city? Let's say starting next year, when the new, when uh, the new legislators go to Annapolis. Well, hopefully, he'll do the same thing that he's continued. He he has done for uh, years in the past, which is to provide an excellent quality of service. He is extremely dedicated. He is extremely skilled, and um, you know, I have I have depended on his advice as well as previous mayors. Can you cite any legislation that he was every, involved with? Every piece of legislation that has a fiscal note he's involved with. Mm -hmm. Regarding BUILD and their uh, meeting last night in which the pastors were critical of your response, they said, to their proposal on Oliver, what is your response to their criticism or background to that? So the notion that I, I don't support uh, individuals who um, have previously been incarcerated in their efforts to find employment is inconsistent with the facts. Uh, 
uh, the Mayor's Office of, em of Employment Development through our uh, one-stop career centers as well as community job hubs see well over 25,000 people a year. Mm -hmm. We have one center that is totally dedicated to individuals uh, in the reentry community, people who have been in incarcerated. Um, I've also demonstrated my willingness to work with, in, in, work with groups and individuals that want to provide uh, training programs and guarantee employment. Um, we were at uh, Baltimore City Community College yesterday with uh, highlighting a program for, uh, you know, for, for individuals who've had difficulty entering the job market, who've had success with the training, as well as highlighting another program with an individual like uh, Build, who wanted to, uh, to, to provide job training for individuals that are hard to employ. Uh, and, and because I've done, I mean, the, the, the evidence is there. If you're willing to work with me, I'm willing to work with you. They've done a lot of work. They've done a lot of work. They've raised money. I don't understand why they're not uh, willing to take the extra step and get certified like Mr. Foster is at Second Chance so they can uh, receive funding uh, through the state uh, to, for, for job training. Was there a proposal they wanted roughly a half million dollars from your office? Was, were you um, concerned about the proposals and the matter that there's not the money there or that you thought that the program was weak? as it was presented to you. I think your two choices are, uh, I think there's there's more to it than the two choices that you're presenting. Well, please tell us. I mean, I've just said, we, we provide um, services to that, not just that community, but the individuals that, that they seek to help. Uh, we're on the same page. Uh, so their that we need effort would be redundant in a, in a sense? I'm willing to work with BUILD. Uh, I've always been. We've worked together on uh, several major initiatives, whether it's funding for after-school programs, school construction. Uh, we've even worked uh, in, the, in the Oliver community where they had the event with my public safety initiative and the ongoing work that's happened subsequent to that. Um, I'm, I continue to be uh, willing to work with them. I'm, you know, it's unfortunate that uh, they, are, um, they, the, they are angry, but the, the, the notion that, uh, you know, the, the, the thought or the, the um, information that they're putting out there that I'm not supporting individuals in the, in the uh, community that have um, priorly been incarcerated is just not consistent with the facts. My budget reflects it. My history uh, in, with that community reflects it. The number of people that we've been able to connect with jobs reflects it. Well, what, are you going to be willing to meet with them in the next couple of weeks? Because their, their complaint is that your office doesn't want to meet with them since uh, last month, roughly. I've met with Bill too many times to count. Um, you know, it. The, the, I've met with them on this, though. I've met with them on that, and they know all they have to do is ask. Ask for what? If they, we, my administration has met with them. Mm -hmm. If they want to meet with me, we can sit down and meet. They want me to cut a check, and that's not what. That's not what's happening. It's not a matter of whether or not I'm willing to meet with okay, them. Okay, money aside, they've been trying to meet with you since the beginning of the year about this plan. That's according to them. I'm not going back and forth on that. Mayor, um, in, in uh, terms of the impact of the decriminalization, and decriminalization, um, bill that passed and is signed, mm -hmm. what, um, have you spoken to the police commissioner and the police department about the impact this may have on Not yet. Police? I mean, this is still very new. Do you so think it will have impact? I don't know. I think it's, it is, um, it's still new. I think all of us are uh, taking a look. I mean, the, the bill was amended up until the last, you know, minutes, I think, of the, the session. So, I, I'm, you know, we're going to take a look at it and see if, what, if any, impact it'll have. Do you support it? You support the bill that passed. And I, the, the the Black Caucus uh, in the legislature worked very hard on this legislation. Their efforts to um, to deal with the disparity in the criminal justice system when it comes to um, the racial disparity when it comes to uh, the number of arrests of African Americans for small amounts of drugs. I I support leveling that playing field and getting to the bottom of the disparity. Um, I, I think I've been uh, clear that this is not necessarily the tactic I would have chosen, but I'm certainly not going to stand in the way. Just noted I didn't ask about it. You didn't ask? About marijuana. <laughs>
maybe maybe you already you, maybe you forgot to ask. Maybe you maybe I you've already been know. indulging. Ask the question. It's not a crime anymore. Yeah, no, that's true. <laughs> well, see, I, I see the smile on your face. <laughs> You're nibbling on something over there. Uh, yeah. so the police Your whole demeanor around. has changed. Police will not carry out 12 grams yeah, in a third out day. No. <laughs> For your case. I'd like to ask you about a story that White Yard did, about, okay. um, which is something that's been working in the works for a while with GBC. I think it's called Green Tracks. Is it called Green Tracks? It's the greening yeah, yeah, yeah. corridor coming in from the city, which is. I'll say this if you really want to talk about it, I'd love to talk to you at length. About I think we are. Um, this has been an issue that has um, that many people in, um, particularly the business community, have complained about for years. And we listened and uh, we took a look at um, what we could do to fix the situation. And I think we have some really innovative uh, ideas to uh, create a better uh, point of entry. Um, you know, along the tracks, along the Amtrak line. So it's, I think it's, it would do a disservice to give you a quick answer. So it's a very interesting project. Well, I'd we love all to show you know that. the problem of, um, yes, we all know the problem. The, it's the a solution, welcoming right, 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 definitely right. is, yeah. Right. And the, the solution is, is a, is a collection of solutions that have happened because of a lot of collaborative work. And I'd love to give you a, a more in depth. Is there, is there, what, what is the goal at the end of the day? I mean, obviously the city has a tremendous amount of blight, so you can't tear it all down at once. It's not even you? about that. It's, and, and again, it's, it's worth you taking a, taking a look at the whole um, project. It's, it's more than the blight. It's, um, you know, do we have uh, parking lots, you know, Department of Transportation parking lots that are housing trucks, and which, you know, that's not the prettiest thing to look at. Um, you know that we can we can do something else with that space space to make it a more inviting welcome. You know, is, are there ways that we can work with the urban agriculture uh, community to um, provide greening uh, opportunities? And it's like a lot of things like that. So it's more than just the, the vacant homes. It's a more comprehensive approach, and it's a lot of people coming together. Is work yeah. started? I believe so. Yeah. Mayor, my name is Mark Quinn, I'm the Baltimore Sun, and I'm the new investigative reporter. Can I ask a follow up question on the marijuana? Mm hmm. Why not? Sorry. <laughs> Where are you from, Mark Quinn? Well, I'm originally Detroit, Cleveland, but I came from Florida to get up here. Okay. There's already a Mark Quinn in town. I hope it holds. Is he good or bad? I like him. <laughs> <laughs> Do you buy into the proponents' arguments that the, the decriminalization will free up officers to chase him? You know, I don't know. I, you know, I think again. I think it's 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 too early to tell. Um, yeah, I, I don't have an opinion on that yet. I'd, I'd like to take a look at it before um, I say whether it would be helpful or harmful in our efforts, our, our crime fighting efforts. How about in the? Because I knew you, you have a, a goal of a more efficient. Yeah, I, I don't know how it's going to, I mean, again, this is too early to tell, you know, we have to take a look at uh, how it's impacted the, the uh, officers' use of time in other uh, jurisdictions where they've, uh, you know, tried uh, initiatives like that before I could make a determination. Will you be welcoming medical marijuana facilities to Baltimore? <laughs> Now you're doing Janice's bidding. <laughs> this is well, what it. This is what it. This is. This is. That was the other girl. I don't know. Okay, no opinion. On Are you, no opinion. I think that Maggie McIntosh's bill about taking your transporting your making the homestead tax credit transportable mm -hmm. was approved. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you're a proponent. Yeah. yeah. Listen, I'm. It, we've been. Uh, I've, again, been willing to work with people, whether they're legislators or community people that have, have come up with ideas to try to uh, continue our trend towards uh, reduction in property taxes and make, um, you know, staying in Baltimore uh, easier for, uh, for homeowners. And I want to uh, thank um, Delegate McIntosh for her willingness to work with my administration to uh, craft a piece of legislation that we think uh, would help us to do that. Do you support the, there was a proposal to limit the number of liquor licenses in Bellevue area. Do you support that uh, measure? It's been delayed. Yeah, that was something that uh, 
it seemed to be uh, introduced at the last, you know, sort of the 11th hour, um, and I didn't get uh, advance notice on why uh, that was happening and haven't had conversations with the, the sponsor uh, on that. I, I understand uh, very, I'm very keenly aware of the impact of uh, concentrations of uh, liquor stores and liquor licenses in neighborhoods and the potential uh, harmful effects. So I can understand um, the motivation from from you know kind of that vantage point. I just uh, hadn't been in communication uh, about that particular neighborhood to know that that was an issue in that community. There was a police oversight committee, uh, police oversight hearing this past week, and the commissioner talked about his crime plan being implemented in January. And overall, he's happy with how things are going as far as crime going down during the first quarter. Uh, he's also ramping up for, as we go into summer, with uh, more people going outside. Just overall, how do you feel the plan is being implemented? I th well, I, I think to an extent the, the, the uh, fact speaks for themselves. We had the lowest uh, single-digit homicide rate for March. I think we haven't had that since 83. Um, it, I know that I, I think we all can agree we have a long way to go. Uh, but we're making progress, significant progress, in moving towards a, a safer city. Um, you know, the, the, I think the plan is moving forward. His plan, the strategic plan, are, uh, portions of it are being implemented, and we're seeing success. I think that the uh, current negotiations that are happening with the FOP on their contract will help with that. Um, and you know, again, I'm pleased with the, the progress, and I'm encouraged. Uh, that uh, that we can reach our goal of being a much safer city. He had admitted an, a mistake when I talked with them as far as changing. He, when he came in, he left everything as his predecessor had left it, and then when he was starting to feel the pressure, he changed the plan. He said that was a mistake for him because it cut, it really didn't help the matter, Sandy. Um, did you, um, I don't know how often you talked about that with him, but. Do you feel that he made a mistake uh, during the summer as far as changing strategy as the uh, spike was taking it? As the, uh, so I am going to assume from your question you're talking about the enforcement zones. Um, no, I'm talking about last summer when we had the spike in violence. He said he changed from his predecessor strategy to uh, his... So to that's what he was talking about. So and we've talked about this before. I said... Uh, in Baltimore, like in other cities, you know, I mentioned Chicago specifically, that uh, there was a, a, a strategy of the, the enforcement zones, the target enforcement zones, with, uh, with tactical units. Uh, those units were very effective in suppressing crime. They also resulted, whether it's in Baltimore or in Chicago and other areas where they were implemented, in very high incidents of police brutality, discourtesy, many complaints that prevented us from having the types of relationships we wanted to have. Uh, with the community. Um, just like in Chicago under um, Mayor Emanuel, the, the units were taken down and they were taken down all at once. Um, they saw a spike in violence, we saw a spike in violence, and I've said this before, I think even here at this podium, that hindsight is 2020. Um, when I had the conversation with Mayor Emanuel, we both, we both came to the, the, the same conclusion that it was the right thing to do to dismantle those units, but how we did it. Uh, was, um, in hindsight, not the best to uh, support our short-term, in, in the short-term, our uh, public safety uh, strategy of reducing violence. I think um, those zones are, we've reestablished the enforcement zone, done it in a different way, that um, we, that I'm hearing from police officers has significantly imp improved morale, and the numbers bear out, it's significantly re uh, reduced violence in those areas. So I think, uh, while the the manner in which the 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 unit was taken down um, was not hindsight shows was not the best. I think the implementation of the expanded zones has proven to be a success. This was the you're talking about the violent crime impact section mm -hmm. <clears throat> division changed names um, and that's gone. Am I correct? Yes. Um, this was the um, Colonel Skinner's baby in many ways. Um, do you want to comment on this departure from the department? I think I did. <laughs> when he left, I said, thank you. Thank you for his service. Okay. All right. Do you, um, did he have anything to do with that in terms of the dismantling of that? I don't know. 
do one more. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Puente, nice to meet you. Welcome. Thank you.